The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. Access Fort Wayne is a department of the Allen County Public Library. If you or anyone you know might be interested in making a television show, please call 260-421-1250. Welcome to the Cashman Mind, Body, Spirit Show. <laughs> Let's have a little fun together today. My main interest in today's uh, subject here about uh, our weight uh, and illnesses uh, that it might cause, it's really, that's the reason, about 30, 50 illnesses are associated with being overweight. Uh, yeah, but you are what your blood tests are. So I always tell people who are the trophies thinner on the outside, a little more fat on the inside, that the, the blood work really determines your health. But if you're overweight and, 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 and maybe uh, uh, even obese, it's a judgment-free zone. The only reason it interests me, it causes so many illnesses which can be prevented from disability uh, to blindness, to renal disease, to liver disease, to amputations, dislocations. I could go on and on. So let's discuss the science uh, of, of this a little bit. Uh, and uh, if you have questions, you're welcome to email me, look me up, and this is part two. You can go to YouTube and, and put in Woody Cashman uh, and uh, the subject that interests you, and, and it, it should pop up. Uh, the, uh, the brain really controls uh, our appetite. It, it, it is our chemistry of our body that determines our appetite, yeah. Uh, the hypothalamus, hypothalamus, okay, let's keep the words friendly, about the size of your thumbnail. Size of your thumbnail, but this is the control center uh, of, of your temperature, uh, of your uh, appetite, for example. Uh, and uh, it's the insulin and leptin center. Insulin is secreted by the uh, pancreas, uh, and leptin uh, is, uh, made by every cell in your body. And, and these two have a control center uh, in the hypothalamus, the ventromedial hypothalamus is called. Uh, and, uh, it, and it is the interaction of all these hormones, the, the thyroid, the uh, adrenaline, the leptin, uh, the, in, the uh, insulin, the the estrogen, the progesterone, it's their interaction, the symphony that determine uh, your health uh, and also your appetite, uh, for example, whether you're hungry or not. It's their interaction. So when I look at people, you can't believe I look at people, okay? Uh, what, because I've been teaching this for so long, I can almost literally <laughs> see these neurotransmitters, hormones, neuropeptides, that are racing around your body and interacting. So when I look at a person, <laughs> I, I think I see them. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but that makes medicine more interesting because I understand uh, the person. So uh, today, let's try to unlock the secret of weight loss. Because to be healthy, that's, I mean, that's the main reason we like to con control it. Maybe we need to lose some. Uh, maybe we don't want to gain some. Uh, so. Health is an elegant and harmonic symphony of hormones, neurotransmitters, and neuropeptides, the interaction that run your body, how you feel, how you think, whether you're depressed, what your appetite is. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, this is Candace Pert published this work originally uh, around 19. 1970, she wrote a book called Molecules of Emotion. 
I happened to get hold of that book, and I've been a different doctor ever since. I realized that how we think, how Army, Navy, Air Force, our immunity interact with each other determines our health and how we feel. Yet, at the med school level, I talk to med students, they get no living idea of this. They have no idea that this is attached to the human body. I've been there. Uh, I've been there. Occasionally, I gave a talk there, but, but uh, I think we physicians must understand that uh, when we're speaking uh, to patients because how they feel uh, determines what they're eating, uh, how they're sleeping, whether they're depressed or not. Uh, so uh, millions are dying, for example, from type 2 diabetes or getting their legs amputated uh, because of what they're eating and what their weight is. So we're, they're talking about 30, 50 chronic uh, long-term diseases. Uh, so, and what's especially important that we teach us uh, to potential parents, mother and father, going back a generation or two, is because uh, what their habits are, what they ate, how they uh, exercise, going to affect the baby. And, and when the baby uh, uh, is, is uh, in the uh, uh, uterus, uh, uh, growing, uh, what the mother is eating, whether she's exercising or not, what she's thinking, whether she's smoking or consuming alcohol or uh, what type of food she's eating, through epi upon epigenetics can affect the baby. So the baby can be born underweight, overweight, uh, develop weight problems in middle age, which are determined on the genetic script that was writ as written a as a fetus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so. Knowledge is very important. Uh, so leptin and insulin. Now insulin, every body is full of cells. Each cell has on it receptors. Every cell, Candace Pert at NIH was looking through an electron microscope. And she's the first one to see those. <laughs> yeah. She saw them wiggling and dancing and she realized then that our hormones, chemicals, things we take, things our body makes, hit these receptors and open the door to the cell. So insulin takes sugar into the cell to make energy. We have no energy, we're dead. We need a, a, a ATP. Insulin was discovered early 1900s and finally they, they knew it was there. They could make the hormone finally, 19, about uh, 1920 uh, or so, and it's available uh, now. Uh, so. Uh, and then leptin was dis discovered in 1994, yeah, so many years later, and each fat cell makes leptin. But these two interact with each other uh, uh, at the hypothalamic level. You increase the uh, leptin level uh, and you become lean, okay? Your appetite uh, goes down. Uh, you have leptin resistance, it works the other way. It, it goes up and, you, and your appetite uh, increases. Uh, the same uh, with uh, insulin. Uh, you raise the insulin level, it opens the door of the cell up and lets fat in, so you're going to gain weight. So these two interact with each other. Uh, uh, and uh, so, uh, which is the most important hormone, the insulin or the leptin? This could be debated. I'm my last part one in this series was more about the insulin. This one is more about the leptin. So I'd like you to, ha if you want to read this uh, uh, book, Mastering Leptin, it's an excellent book. Uh, I frankly, uh, frankly, uh, uh, I, I liked it. Uh, and uh, Byron Richards. Uh, CCN is a, the author uh, of this uh, book, and I've read it two or three times now. And I, I think it's uh, uh, scientific and it's value uh, because it's important in our life. So when you're about 20% overweight, uh, people are considered to be obese. We normally use the body mass index, BMI, height and weight. Uh, uh, to figure out uh, BMI, 
you know, 25 or under normal, uh, 25 to 30 overweight, 30 and above uh, to 40 uh, obese and 40 and above morbidly obese. But it doesn't work for everybody. People are very musculature, have big, big old muscles, so the thing doesn't work quite right. Also racial groups, uh, and Asians, for example, have different BMI, so it's not a perfect uh, uh, system, but to give you some idea. Uh, another way to measure whether you're overweight or not is to look at the belly. Uh, if you have a pot belly, you get to prove it to me you're not diabetic. I saw a patient like that today, where I see people for free on Friday mornings at a uh, pharmacy, uh, Three Rivers uh, 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 Pharmacy. Uh, and, uh, and, and I'm not making fun of it, I'm just saying a, a belly measurement is better almost than a blood test. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and if your uh, uh, belly is bigger than your hips, for example, they have ratios. Odds are uh, uh, that you may have fat under the skin. Okay, but but a lot of this fat is called white fat. Uh, it's located around your organs and in your mesentery, maybe in, in your liver, and that makes it metabolic, a lot of hormones in there. Yeah, there's leptin in there, but there's many other hormones in there that stimulate other glands. So uh, a lot of times the fat is inflamed, it's inflammatory uh, fat. So some people even consider the subcutaneous fat and the fat that's in the mesentery in your gut, and they consider that to be another gland because there are so many hormones in it. Interesting. Uh, it's, it's very uh, uh, interesting. Uh, so, uh, uh, so leptin, which is made by each cell, okay, uh, helps control what's going on in the cell and sends messages to the hypothalamus where, where we have the leptin. Uh, uh, and the insulin control center, the, v, the VMN, uh, the ventral lateral hypothalamus, okay? The, con the control centers affected by insulin and leptin levels. Uh, okay, so it, it's uh, fat, for example, makes leptin, but also makes hormones that help regulate uh, pancreatic hormones, uh, the adrenal. Uh, uh, estrogen, progesterone, thyroid, pituitary, hypothalamus, you see? So uh, fat, especially white fat, uh, uh, is also a con control center. We have to keep that in mind. So to be healthy, to keep a normal weight, uh, avoid excessive weight, uh, you have to be a healthy asset manager. You've got to manage this body or uh, foods will manage you, okay? You yourself must. So you must put, you want to be healthy, you should participate in your health care. So you've got to understand some of this. Maybe you watch this, going to be a YouTube show in 10 days. Watch it a few times uh, so you have some idea. Uh, in nutrition, it, it, I, I use it, what's called a wheel of eight. Participate in your health care is number one. Number two is nutrition. Okay, what are you eating? Are you eating 70, 80 percent uh, foods of color, maybe 20 percent organic meat? Are you exercising? This is number three in the wheel of eight. Are you exercising a little bit, half hour at least five days a week, maybe a little more? Through my own experience, what I recommend, uh, you know, they talk a lot uh, about. Uh, High intensity in the mitten training. Uh, I don't mean high intensity. The system I use, I, I count my right foot. So I count to 10, I take 10 steps. Then I take 20 steps, a little faster. I'm not running. What I'm saying is this pounding of running, I'm not sure how healthy that can be. And you may trip and fall, so I want you to walk a little faster. Now we're up to 20. Again, always use the right foot for the county, and then, then I do maybe up to 100 or so, so I'm slow, a little faster, uh, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm boosting 
uh, what I'm doing. So it's a boost buster, okay, <laughs> or high intensity intermittent training. So regular walking, a little faster, a little faster yet. And I repeat that process about 10 times. That's a nice workout. That's a nice workout. So exercise is important. It clears the mitochondria, uh, the little factories that are in every cell. We have these little organelles that, that make our energy, our mitochondria. There, there are many in our cells, but many more, say, in the heart cells, the brain cells, fewer, say, in the, in the skin. Uh, and they become sick, too. So they need to be repaired, but exercise repairs the mitochondria. So they increase your uh, energy. Very in interesting uh, uh, subject. So you do have some responsibility uh, for your health. I mean, what, what you're eating, how much you're exercising, how much you're stressing. Uh, uh, so uh, the uh, thought process really is quite important. Uh, easiest way to fix something, if we have a problem, is to look for the root of it. What's the beginning? Okay, so timing is everything. Timing is everything. So, uh, so to have studies done on your children are uh, extremely important. Dr. Joseph Kraft really studied this in detail with serum insulins, and he published a book, 2006. You can see him on YouTube, Joseph Kraft, 92 years old, speaking to you. YouTube, Joseph uh, uh, Kraft. Uh, and he really uh, discovered that serum insulins are more important than blood sugars. So if you're going to get screening blood tests, get insulin assay test and glucose assay test. More important, uh, for example, that HbA1c, which tells blood sugar going back about three months. So the Timing is everything, okay? This interaction of all these hormones in your body. So the biochemistry of your body, okay, determines what you eat, whether you're gonna, what kind of food you're gonna be looking for. It depends on this interaction of all these hormones, neuropeptides uh, in, in your body. So uh, uh, if you don't, you can develop diabetes, which can lead to dementia heart attacks, amputations. So you see somebody amputated, odds are they had vast disease from eating the wrong food, which could have been prevented or reversed six weeks or so. So keep all your body parts if possible, okay? And uh, so leptin probably is the primary controller of your body balance. Or another person might say, no, it's the, uh, it's the insulin, but they uh, uh, work together and against each other. Uh, uh, the, uh, and there's fat in leptin. Every fat cell has some leptin in it, uh, which can turn things on and off, oh, okay? So uh, uh, fat is an endocrine organ. It's an organ, as I already uh, mentioned. Uh, and its primary hormone is leptin, uh, which sends messages to the hypothalamus, and the hypothalamus sends messages down to the leptin. Uh, you can develop something called leptin resistance, uh, which occurs when you overweight the leptin. And just like you have insulin resistance, where the insulin can't get the sugar in the cell, but leptin resistance it's not controlling, sending signals to the hypothalamus anymore. So the higher the leptin turns the appetite off, now the higher the leptin turns the appetite on. That's leptin resistance, insulin resistance, remember? It can get the sugar into the cell. If it can't, it's called insulin resistance. Uh, and uh, so as we get a day older, uh, we do develop some leptin and insulin resistance. That's a normal course of things. And that's the reason people who seem to look fairly healthy uh, as we get older seem to develop a touch of diabetes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we get a glucose tolerance test, blood sugar test, serum insulin assay test as you get a day older. Very important. I've seen it 
many, many uh, uh, times. Leptin resistance also ha is associated with increased rates of cancer. As in diabetics, especially type 2, tend to have leptin resistance. They have increased cancer rates. 50, 75 percent of cancers are due to that. Okay, uh, and uh, so uh, insulin and leptin are kind of locked into, into each other, and the ventromedial hypothalamus, that part of the nail size control center, uh, uh, affects that. And in the brain, we ha we have we have so many interaction of hormones. Uh, you've heard me speak on, on other shows uh, about the nucleus acubans one millimeter in size is full of dopamine, which for us is the quick fix. Have this donut and the dopamine is exposed. They can now through functional, functional MRI scans, they can demonstrate now this reaction of molecules being secreted in the brain uh, uh, when we're uh, uh, eating different kind of foods, uh, for example they can start to demonstrate the molecules. They've always had PET scans where they use sugar, uh, like cancer is a sugar feeder, so if you have cancer spread around, PET scans uh, can show them, but MR, functional MRIs show what I'm speaking about in, in a lot more detail, uh, okay? Uh, so a loss of communication between the fat and the brain, that's what's called leptin resistance, okay? So as I already mentioned, Fat cells, besides making leptin, also make about 15 other signals, vascular signals, kidney, liver disease, reproductive, thyroid, adrenal, progesterone, estrone, all interact with your uh, uh, fat cells. Uh, so uh, fat is not just a storage bin where you're st storing things. Okay, remember insulin, I said, opens the door uh, to the cell and lets uh, fat in. Uh, but it is the primary player in behavior, metabolism, biochemistry, vast disease, uh, cancer. I could go on and on. Uh, so uh, white adipose tissue, which is more in, in the belly and inside, uh, inside your abdominal cavity. Uh, so it, it's an endocrine organ. It's uh, pro-inflammatory, okay? So how does fat communicate? Okay, we get white fat, we have brown fat. Brown fat is around the hips, and it's not as dangerous as white fat, okay? One of the big things uh, that affect uh, our, our weight, for example, and our fat is the sympathetic nervous system. That's our, our stress reactor, okay? We are stressed about something, uh, and uh, the blood pressure go, goes up, metabolism sl slows down, uh, energy secretion into our blood increases because we have a tiger running at us, oh, uh, okay? So the sympathetic nervous system uh, has adrenaline in them that reacts, but also it sends a message uh, to the uh, adrenal gland which secretes uh, cortisol. And cortisol uh, is secreted a lot in stress that increases our appetite because we want to eat more to have energy to fight the tiger running at us as a stress reaction. So the sympathetic nervous system has, so people who are stressed a lot have stressed bellies. Mm -hmm. Constantly trying to get uh, energy because of the hormones, uh, okay? Uh, and they, the sympathetic nervous system uses data uh, from these hormonal changes, about five to nine pieces of, of uh, data. Uh, to show anger and frustration and agitation and irritation and maybe make us run to get away from whatever is threatening us. Uh, uh, so the relaxed part of the autonomic nervous system, maybe the sympathetic is the autonomic. It's an automatic response to a threat, okay, or something you're worrying about. Uh, it's the parasympathetic nervous system. It's the relaxed part of the nervous system. The vagus nerve is the biggest uh, anatomic structure that we uh, hear about, uh, and it, uh, and what it does, it, it increases our appetite. Sympathetic nervous system shuts the appetite down uh, because we want to fight the tiger. But it makes us relax, and we eat more. We eat, eat that donut. We eat, we eat that uh, uh, pizza. Uh, 
so nature designed in us through uh, evolution uh, some determinant about, about, about insulin and leptin so that we can respond to the stresses around us and survive, okay? So leptin is intimately tied to stress, stress eater, and, and, and we gain, wet, gain weight, okay? Leptin de decreases, uh, uh, it, then we appetite goes up, okay? And then remember I said the other one, if it increases, uh, we tend to become lean uh, and appetite uh, goes down. And uh, so this sympathetic nervous system drives the metabolic rate uh, of our body. So, uh, and it can lead to uh, being overweight. Remember that stress belly I talked about. Uh, so leptin is the primary hormone of fat. That's the reason I devoted this uh, lecture uh, uh, to, uh, to that, okay? When we first go to sleep, uh, our leptin levels for about two hours go up a great deal, so we're not hungry anymore. But some of that, that timing is determined by what time we eat uh, before we go to bed, for example. And then through the night, uh, it goes down, and it's very low in the morning so that we might want to eat, okay? Uh, and uh, so uh, to avoid craving of food before we sleep, the level leptin level has to, has to be down, okay? Uh, but if you have leptin resistance, you might want to eat a, uh, six donuts before you go to bed or have a bunch of alcoholic drinks, too. And uh, so uh, a leptin resistance, adrenal resistance, sympathetic uh, stress resistance all affect uh, our eating habits, and, and it is... Uh, Hormonally, hormones uh, hormones control it. Okay, I mean that's very uh, uh, interesting. And uh, so, some people uh, say go into leptin. What's a leptin diet? Okay, uh, it, it's where we pay attention uh, to the food uh, that that we're eating. Okay, how much sugar are we using? For example. Uh, and we don't recommend uh, sugary drinks, uh, uh, for example, who have been in fructose corn syrup a lot of times, uh, which doesn't increase the insulin level, but goes to the liver uh, and stuffs the fat cells and makes us gain weight. But I didn't say not to eat any fruit, because fruit has a lot of fiber in it, so you're really not exposed to that much leptin, okay? And uh, uh, so, uh, Five rules, generally, uh, to follow, uh, which, which is in this book, Mastering Leptin, which, which I tend to give with. Uh, if you can stretch the amount of time between your meals, uh, you will run out of sugar to metabolize in your blood, and the fat cells will open up and let out fat. It's a good way to, to lose weight, like eight at six in the evening, and don't eat again till nine in the morning. You, the last four or five hours, you've been into fat metabolism. The fat, the fat cells have opened up, uh, and uh, you're now metabolizing fat to stay alive. Eat only three meals a day. That's another good advice. Uh, and, and, some will recommend snacking, no, because it interferes with insulin and leptin signaling, okay? You want to go into just a touch of keto. I don't necessarily go along with pure keto, too much meat, too many bad fats. But to go a touch of keto means stretching it out. You're fasting, really, is what you're fasting. And now you're starting to empty your fat cells, and you're going to lose weight. A good way to lose uh, 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 weight. Uh, three meals a day and try to let five to six hours go between meals, no, no snacking, okay? And avoid excessively large meal, but I didn't say dieting. Did I say dieting? No, no, no. Uh, I said eating the right food, nutrient-dense food. Having some protein for breakfast, you heard of this before, uh, has, has uh, 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 quite a bit of value. Actually, there's a lot of protein in, in vegetables. Mm -hmm. Nuts and beans are, are full of protein. 
uh, maybe uh, some eggs, maybe a piece of turkey baking, for example. Uh, if you have more of a protein uh, breakfast, uh, you'll get away from insulin and leptin signaling, uh, and you won't have this drop in the insulin level, and man, I gotta eat again right away. So a protein breakfast is important. I recommend juicing and smoothies. To, l to learn the science of juicing and smoothies, you can go to Facebook, Cashman, you can see it on there or different books. I think it's a good habit because you're gonna get a great concentration of nutrients into your body, which run the metabolism of your body, and they lead to, to uh, good health. So I like people, have a smoothie day. I have one every day. I had one today, I'll have one tomorrow because I'm getting a nutrient load in my 137 pounds seems to be very steady, changes very little, unless I eat out and there's sodium in the food and I don't know about it and I might gain two pounds, many water. Next day, I'm, it's down again. Your body has a set point. It tend to, unless you have excesses, It'll try to keep things uh, the same over time. Uh, so, uh, but you don't need to eat some carbohydrate to stay alive. So, uh, eat nutrient dense uh, carbohydrates, uh, 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 carrots, uh, uh, broccoli, or they all have some carbohydrates. And remember, they're also full of proteins. So, you don't need to eat uh, animal meat to get all the protein you need. No, no, no. You can. Uh, uh, get that f from vegetables and, uh, and nuts and guacamole, for example. So be a health asset manager. Pay attention to what you're eating. So uh, remember what I said, the biochemistry of your body determines what your appetite is, how much you're seeking uh, uh, food, uh, uh, for, exa for, for example, okay? So we spoke about exercise a little bit, but that's not the total solution. A lot of people who exercise a lot eat right back uh, what uh, uh, they burned exercising. But remember, exercising is, is also important in building the mitochondria uh, in your muscles, which have the most mitochondria. Your heart muscle has the most of, of all. Uh, so to exercise, to build your mitochondria, the little factories that make energy uh, in your body, uh, is critical. Walking in the long run probably is the best because it's uh, low impact. Running and banging uh, away at your body, some people, uh, some people it's not even healthy, okay? Some people use Q10 as a supplement uh, to build up the mitochondria. I'm sort of in, in between on that. I think if you use self-exercise regularly, uh, which I do, uh, and it's interesting because I think I probably was overdoing it at one time uh, because I was you know, doing weight and working out and playing pickleball and tennis and tap dancing and, and going on and on. Uh, uh, and uh, I think I was doing, damaging your, my mitochondria uh, uh, and I cut back on the uh, weight lifting which I was doing, not excessive, uh, but I was doing it repetitively. Uh, uh, and uh, the soreness I was developing went away. But I'm still, you know, playing pickleball and tennis and taking tap dance lessons and walking in nature every day. <laughs> so my mitochondria definitely are getting uh, uh, fed. Uh, okay. A uh, lot of the heart disease which we're seeing, you know, we're looking at the hospitals and you see a heart in front of them and cancer in front of them. Uh, uh, what's really happening here, uh, we are, letting people have these uh, illnesses. Uh, we uh, uh, need to try to prevent them by doing proper blood testing. Remember what I said, uh, if you, you need to get maybe glucose tolerance tests or, or serum insulin assay tests, uh, uh, which should even be done in children, yes. I, I've been to some pediatricians and talked to them about it, Dr. Barula. Uh, things like I do. I've had some shows with him, uh, and I uh, pulled up an old DVD him and I did together where we were talking about that. Children need to be uh, checked. Uh, blood sugar, uh, abnormal fats or not, and some lead a, a 
insulin assay test, even at age three or four, because then we can really prevent disease. Otherwise, we continue on the, otherwise we continue on the path of, of uh, these hospitals treating all these patients, heart attacks and strokes, which could have been prevented 90% of the time. So I encourage you to get proper uh, 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 testing. Remember, Dr. Kraft said a rise in the serum insulin is the first sign of vascular disease long before your blood sugars are at normal. Now, Pete, your uh, hypothalamus also makes a hormone called, called NF-kappa-A, which is, which is a, 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 a hormone uh, which signals uh, other hormones also. In our cells, every fat cell has in it, remember I said it other hormones in it, uh, has kappa B, which also signals the hypothalamus and in, in other glands uh, in your body as determined whether you should eat more or eat uh, less. Uh, and uh, the, uh, you can take statins and that'll help con as a supplement to help control the inflammation in your body. Uh, but I notice a lot of people are taking statins, which can have side effects, and the side effects are it affects the mitochondria that uh, controls your energy and you know, turns them off. And some people get so severe, uh, they, they almost die from it. At the moment, I, I think too many people are on statins. But you've had a few heart attacks, a lot of inflammation in your body. You may need to, uh, to take the, uh, a medication or uh, Q10 uh, uh, supplement. I mean, sometimes it's indicated. Ingesting, ingesting MSG, okay, uh, affects the appetite uh, center. Uh, avoid it because it turns the appetite on, okay? Uh, uh, so again, the hypothalamus is in charge of the leptin control center. Uh, it's also in charge uh, of stress control, the hormones secrete uh, when we're stressed out, uh, and, and uh, so, uh, and the leptin itself, as I said many times, is a control cell, uh, control center in each cell in your body, uh, and uh, so leptin is the key. Uh, and uh, it, it, it's uh, if you can have a normal leptin level, uh, that uh, helps control any disease that you might have. Uh, but the blood testing for it is not quite as reliable uh, as insulin. So I think to me, at insulin levels are, not, are number one, although the uh, uh, leptin levels certainly uh, play a part. Let's go back in history a little bit here. A Dr. Bernstein published a book in 1983, Richard Bernstein, uh, he was a type 1 diabetic. That's where uh, you don't make any insulin. It can occur from a virus or bacteria or drinking milk or even gluten can do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's not always a virus or bacteria. Uh, it, 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 it can be things that you are exposed to, how healthy the mother was when you were in the uterus, for example, what she was eating. It helps determine the rate of type 1 diabetics, and they need insulin. Well, Dr. Kraft studied that, and when he found type 1 diabetics, say, died in an accident, he never found any vascular disease, which made him conclude it's the insulin that causes vascular disease. Look at page 48 of his book. Clearly uh, ex explain it. Uh, then, uh, so he placed the, the diabetics on a strict, low-carbohydrate diet, and it worked, and, and, and it worked. Uh, and uh, so we, he called the book, uh, he published another book, one in 1997, Dr. Bernstein, Diabetic Solution, oh, okay. Uh, uh, and uh, then Dr. Atkins published a, a number of books also, and he went low-carbohydrate, so the insulin will go down, but he recommended so much f fat from animals in the end uh, that then he wrote another book called The New Atkins Diet because he realized too it was too much, too much animal products. But, but 
He's the one who pointed out the danger of sugar, so we got to go along with uh, these are good uh, 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 books. Then Gary Taubes wrote some books, 2002, um, and uh, uh, Why We Get Fat was the name of one of his books, excellent books to read. Uh, and the American Heart Association, who was, was thinking it was a little differently, then came out with a book, uh, The No Fad Diet. Well, all those books about diets have some good aspect to them. So the American Heart Association, I think, fiddled while Rome burned. Okay, look at the nation today. So many people are awake, so much diabetes. So the, the help from the government, American Heart Association, Ansel Keys has been very poor, has been very poor. Then a Dr. Bowden wrote in the Annals of Internal Medicine, 2005, when we, took a, when we took away the carbohydrates, the patient spontaneously reduced their daily energy consumption by 1,000 calories. Yeah. So fat wasn't so bad. That's bad fat, omega-6. That's good fats, omega-3s. Uh, so when we cut back uh, on the carbohydrates, people lost big time calories and their weight went boom and their diabetes went away. So he, he, uh, he, he, he did, uh, uh, frankly, uh, 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 prove it. Uh, uh, so uh, they now have functional brain scans I told you about uh, where we can study the, the hormones circulating in the brain. They will demonstrate the parts of brain that have to do with metabolism of eating and thought process, are very helpful. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, so what's the dominant uh, factor here, leptin or insulin? And, uh, uh, but uh, uh, what they have found is drugs really don't work because there's this tremendous interaction of all these hormones and neuropeptides and neurotransmitters. So he's giving one drug it uh, doesn't solve the problem because uh, too many hormones, too many neuro neurotransmitters involved. I mean, just some of that a little bit helpful. Uh, but the answer really is to pay attention to what you were eating. There are a few diseases where it's not related just to what you eat because they, uh, uh, they have tumors uh, of, of, of these sites in the hypothalamus. Yeah, yeah, Dr. L Lustig studied those. He's a pediatric endocrinologist. So he studied these and uh, when they take the tumor out, for example, they remove the insulin leptin center, the, the uh, ventral uh, medial uh, hypothalamus, they remove it when removing the uh, tumor. Uh, and, and the children as a result develop tremendously obesity, totally uncontrollable because they lost the leptin center. It proves some of the science, but it ended up with a lot of kids uh, that had uncontrollable uh, uh, weight gain. And uh, in fact, some of the mothers said, I'd rather have the tumor than, than the result when my child is alive. Yeah, that's how bad it really got. Uh, so uh, uh, when you eat a meal, okay, your sugar breaks down, your insulin level uh, increases, okay? Pushes sugar into the cell for energy, but it also opens up the door to the cell, allowing fat in, okay? Uh, so uh, the, in the leptin level uh, go, goes down, okay? Uh, be, because the fat's coming out, uh, and then the leptin tells the pancreas uh, to decrease uh, the uh, uh, insulin. So all these things are interreacting uh, with uh, each other. A very uh, complex. Uh, so some people have insulin resistance. We can't get the sugar in for energy. They have leptin uh, resistance uh, where uh, it, it doesn't decrease or in increase the appetite according to you know, what we would like. So What's the root of weight gain? Insulin resistance, leptin resistance, adrenal resistance, stress. Stress, a big factor that causes us to, to uh, look for a donut. If I come home tonight after all I've done today and there's a donut laying there, I guarantee you 100% or a piece of cake or a carrot cake, whatever, 
I'll be eating it. Because the nature designed in us a circuitry, nature designed in us uh, a uh, circuitry to keep us alive. Yeah, except years ago, the plants we ate didn't have much sugar. Average sugar consumption was five pounds a year, except for the kings and queen who, who could afford the sugar. Uh, a lot of them died from it, became overweight. A lot of them lost their teeth over the darn thing and uh, developed black teeth. Look at a lot of the pictures of the old kings. They got no, te no teeth at all. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, in diabetes, the homeostatic balance uh, is broken. Uh, uh, the, the leptin resistance and the, and the, and the insulin resistance. So, uh, dieting, just cutting back on food, you say, well, I'm going to cut back on food, and uh, it doesn't work. Doesn't that work? It work, might work for a little while, but your body decides to starve themselves. And that's what it did in history and in evolution, uh, because people ate intermittently, you know, 50,000 years ago. They ate intermittently because you know, food was not always available. So when they did have a lot of food uh, season, they'd store it, gain weight, maybe just like my uh, uh, woodchuck living under my house for 10 years now. Uh, I, I notice uh, in spring, he comes out of his cave, and, uh, and he's skinny. He's got a wife now. <laughs> I can't kill animals, so <laughs> that's the way it is. <laughs> and, and, uh, and she's there too. They look real skinny and, and they're eating the corn things and feeding the birds. Uh, and slowly they gain weight. And a couple of weeks ago, everybody disappeared. They're hibernating down there. They become very fat. But the hypothalamus drops their basic metabolic rate, the energy it takes to stay alive, to run the heart, the brain, uh, uh, the skin, the muscles, goes way down. That BMR drops maybe under 20, real low. So they're burning very little of this fat, and that they'll be living through, <laughs> hopefully all winter long. I think, actually, they're about uh, Woody, I call him Woody, <laughs> 12 years, uh, he's been underneath there hasn't caused me any damage. Uh, and I think Woody loves me, and I love Woody. That's the way it is. That's, that's Rudy, okay? <laughs> that, that's Rudy. Uh, so uh, we should test the children. That, to me, is the most important thing. And, and, and we have to stop uh, letting uh, medicine, government providers, intentionally, unintentionally, we need to stop letting them get away with it. Uh, uh, build, building more hospitals, more hospitals, more hospitals. They're very nice, they look pretty, there's more access, but script to the ill, instead of teaching them uh, uh, the science of uh, weight gain, weight control, uh, exercise. But exercise, what percent of people exercise? Five percent. I studied it. Yeah, I even spoke to Planet Fitness. Thirty thousand members. They're selected to begin with to go there. Ten percent work out regularly, which, considering the general public, that's about three point five percent. I read it in other books. So the answer is what you're eating. I want you to exercise, but it's the, your choice of food. Remember your biochemistry. Your, your biochemistry, nucleotide cubans. Uh, serotonin, the things that makes you uh, feel good, that make you seek the food, and type of food, too. But if you're a sugar addict, for example, maybe two or three weeks you can get over it uh, uh, by just not eating it and watching what you're putting on your fingers, your fork, uh, in, and in your plate, okay? So who, who's sitting at the seat that causes this problem. I mean, we're to blame too, we're picking the wrong food, but most people, they lack information. I'm about information, I'm Dr. Information. Turn to my YouTube shows, 1,000 of them, Rudy Cashman YouTube, 1,000 lectures on health, okay? So, no excuses, okay? But we, 
Uh, we don't teach it to the patient as we see them. Schools are teaching only a little bit. You see it here and there. Uh, but we need to maybe change the way we teach. Maybe uh, uh, churches need to get more involved. They're already involved in part, uh, and, and, and I like that. And I teach it to cover churches, and I appreciate that. But at a lot of churches still, you walk in and they're giving you a donut. That's got to stop. We need to teach them that, uh, and this is in the Bible, Corinthians 6, chapter 19, that uh, the body of God is, in, is within your body. So if you're not eating right, you're defiling God's body. So I think religion could be used as a method of teaching because they meet every week. Uh, uh, I, think this, uh, I think they could lead the way, at least I, I work on that. I've been asked to be the speaker of the Martin Luther King Day, January the 20th. I hope you could come because the community asked me to speak about diabetes. I didn't ask the subject, they did. So I have to applaud them for realizing what the problem is. But I tell you, it's the whole community. It's not just the black community, it's the Hispanic community, it's the white community. We all need to change at the type of food uh, that we're eating. So uh, the health insurance industry is partly at fault uh, because uh, th they will not uh, pay for uh, the things you want done to, to help you to become healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, the medical profession is probably uh, to blame because they're not teaching you what the problem really is instead of a script. And, and, and there are associations that, that, that will tell uh, that to respect obesity more, which I do, is a judgment-free zone, but uh, that's, that's a problem. Uh, uh, there are fat activists indeed out there. Uh, and the commercial food industry, fast food, that's huge. Fast food, it's been stripped of all the nutrients. Uh, uh, you're not eating foods of color. Uh, even uh, some of the meat you might have uh, has been uh, wrapped uh, in sugar to make it taste good. Uh, believe me, I've eaten uh, some of that. And, and sugar makes you feel great, so you're more likely uh, going to eat that again. Uh, and the federal government supports the price of sugar, for example, uh, which they should not be doing. Uh, high fructose corn syrup, as government supports, corn, which comes from corn. Corn gets about $40 billion uh, in government uh, support. Uh, so uh, wake up politicians, and I say maybe wake up public and vote them out of office. We need to have a look at that. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and let's look at type of insurance that people have. Uh, healthcare is a discussion right now politically a little bit, uh, but a lot of people are on Medicaid, uh, for example. Uh, a lot of providers don't want to see them because they don't pay anything. Hospitals don't want them because it doesn't pay anything. Uh, uh, so uh, I think we probably should, our moral obligation should be that we all have the same health insurance. So anybody can access any doctor they want to across any state line. That, that's one of my <laughs> pet peeves. If you didn't notice that, I wrote a book, you can go to Amazon, called AmeriCare. You can read in one night, but it, it's what, what I propose. I yet have had one of these presidential candidates so say, that's what I want to do, although I did give it to one of them, actually. Uh, and uh, so let's trace the hormones around the body a little bit here, kind of in summary, with the hypothalamus, the control center of the brain, uh, okay? It's connected to the autonomic nervous system. The tiger runs uh, at you, and it connects to the hypothalamus and sends a message to stop eating because you need the energy to run away from, from the uh, uh, tiger. Uh, and and, that, uh, and the, the sympathetic nervous system then connects to the fat cell and opens the fat cell up, lets some fat out uh, for uh, uh, energy. Uh, and uh, when the either you live or die from the acute stress, uh, and then uh, the cell shuts down, doesn't want to let out any more energy. Uh, and then the uh, insulin and the leptin interact with each other depending on the amount of sugar available, the amount of fat that's available. So the appetite can be turned uh, on and off. And they interact even with, with estrogen uh, and progesterone and other hormones uh, within the uh, fat itself. 
so the vagus nerve is an energy storage nerve, okay? And uh, uh, so uh, uh, insulin is the lipinator. Insulin is the lipinator because insulin puts the sugar into the cell for energy, opens the cell up to allow, to allow fat to come in and the fat cell gets bigger. As we get older, we actually grow more fat cells. Mm -hmm. As uh, children, they're fairly steady and how they are filled depends on what the mother is feeding uh, uh, the baby. Uh, is, the ma is the baby's getting uh, mother's milk? Uh, it's about, for two years, uh, she could be uh, breastfed and milk has in it omega-3 good fats. But if instead we give it cow's milk, uh, it has omega-6 uh, fat in it, different proteins, different carbohydrates, uh, uh, different fats uh, in animals. We have 5,400 uh, mammals, but each milk is designed differently for every mammal. A mouse, for example, you, you drink mouse milk, uh, a mouse will double itself in size two weeks. <laughs> Two weeks, yeah, uh, and every mammal, mammal is it's different. So uh, cow's milk is for baby cows. It has too much fat in it, too much hormone in it. So for children to be drinking uh, uh, cow's milk is ridiculous, and the government has promoted. Eat a read a book called Whitewash, Whitewash, by Joe Keon, Joe Keon. Uh, if you uh, 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 do that, that's the science of milk, about a thousand scientific articles. After I read that, I was uh, done with milk. Don't, don't just accept my opinion. Read Whitewash Joe Keon, or you can watch one of my, you can go Rudy Cashman YouTube, milk in about YouTube shows uh, will uh, uh, show up. Uh, so, uh, Insulin, when it goes up, uh, blocks leptin signaling. Uh, so what you eat can really affect the relationship of insulin and, and uh, 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 leptin. Uh, when people uh, gain a lot of weight, uh, for, for, for example, uh, they, uh, some of their receptors will die out uh, that, uh, that are in uh, uh, these uh, hormones. So when people stop drinking alcohol, for, for example, uh, uh, they ha have developed insulin resistance, leptin resistance, and they'll start eating like anything to satisfy those receptors. So uh, if you're a heavy drinker and you stop, watch out, you may have sudden uh, weight gain that occurs from smoking too. So in summary, what I've tried to tell you uh, today here uh, is that your biochemistry of your body, frankly, uh, determines uh, uh, what your appetite level is because insulin level, and that in turn is determined what you've been eating. You've been eating fast food all the time. You get a different biochemistry uh, than, an than another person, okay? And you are what your blood work is. So I encourage you uh, to get your blood work, even as children, put it on a computer chip. In France, they have what's called a card vitale, all the health information of a lifetime is on one card. You walk in the doctor's office, he sticks it in there, and he knows what's going on in your life. We need a card vitale in this uh, country. We need health care that covers everyone the same. Look at Amazon Books. AmeriCare is a book that I wrote that everyone should be treated uh, the same. It's our moral obligation. They feel that way very strongly in Switzerland. I feel very strongly about that uh, because we need a healthier uh, nation. The hospitals are not going to solve it. The providers are not going to solve it. The government's not going to uh, solve it. You must solve it. Join my train. Join my war. Matter of fact, I do a show on diabetes. I call it Rudy's War on <laughs> Diabetes. So, but, but being overweight or being obese is a result of diabetes. It's not. Uh, what that cause it is a result of it, okay? And uh, thanks so much for listening. Uh, catch my 1,000 YouTube shows. <laughs> we thank public access. 
for providing this time for us uh, to uh, give information to the public. And I, why do I do this? I'm a doctor. I love you. I care about you. Uh, join my army. Talk to me. Give me a hug. Buy me a cup of coffee. I'll sit down with you. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>